if you don't mind, if I could send him the link for 99 Problems. Um, Absolutely. Thank you. you. You gave me the opportunity to see the uh, the treatment for that, and I'm immediately hooked. Like, this okay. is a show that I would binge. I would, uh, I'm, I uh, hopefully will binge eventually, soon. And uh, before I even saw it, I'd see, I saw the conceptual artwork for it on your Facebook page, and that in itself piqued my interest. Um, so could you tell uh, the audience a little bit about that project? Yeah, well, the concept, uh, the way the concept came out was, once again, it was me trying to pay forward to someone. And this, uh, the woman who, is, uh, um, who plays the waitress in it, she, we've been friends for a while. She came over to my house. She said, look, I'm looking for something to do. I came up with this and we were pitching back and forth these ideas. And uh, I said, you know, I, I like the Twilight Zone stuff. And I, I said, I would want to do, and I started coming up with these ideas and then she would kind of go off and I would bring her back on and then boom, it hit. And I said, this is what it is. She says, okay, so let's do it. I said, what do you mean let's do it? She said, let's go make it. And um, I said, okay, so what it will be is, it's, it should have to be a series if we're gonna do that. And she said, okay. And I, um, I mapped it out. I had to give it you know, some, uh, some origin of it, you know, of where it came out. So nobody knows the origin. And then I had to give you know, what happens afterwards. And um, literally the scene, the scene that you saw would be episode five. Oh, so, wow. you know, you're coming into it. And um, so I wrote it and wh what I wanted to do is I wanted, as I was writing, I wanted to see the location because sometimes what happens is I listen to music and I go to a location and I come up with the ideas for scenes. And um, I, I ended up making some phone calls to some actor friends of mine uh, I, I called up uh, um, a few actors and everybody was on board. And I said, look, we're going to do this little thing. I called up a, a good actor friend of mine who was in, I think I told you he was in uh, uh, Battle Los Angeles and um, The Outpost. And he reminded me of, of, um, of Will Smith and it's the character that I wanted, you know, for that. And then at the last second, uh, right before we started, you know, the, the night before we started shooting, he told me that his wife, who's good friends with the actress from Glee, who died, who drowned, he said, I, I can't do this. And I said, we're, sh we're shooting tomorrow, you know? And so I made a phone call to a friend of mine who was an actor that I would have coffee with. And I called him up and I said, you know, his name is Richard Leacock. I said, Rich, you gotta, I gotta, I gotta see you. He came over to my house right away. I told him what was going on. He says, yeah, I'm in, I'll, I'll help you out. When are you gonna do this? He thought it was in a month. I said, it's tomorrow morning, learn the lines. And uh, he got it, you know, he got into it. He did a great job. We, you know, I, I, when I talked to my DP, I said, first, I want to shoot this anamorphic. I want to have it widescreen, but I want the camera constantly to be on a crane. I don't want, you know, I want it to move. I want to have this flow, this, you know, this flow that you, you feel like you're going into it and, you know, you're discovering the story and give it more of a, a mystical, feel but not mystical in the sense where it's fantasy you know and um and you know we uh, we did it uh, um we sh the the hard part was we shot we only had eight hours to shoot each day because we had to be in and out of there you know we weren't allowed to be on the uh, the property prior to our call time it would take a couple of hours to set up and then we'd a couple hours to turn it down and so i was really you know I, I was just under the gun, man. It was, uh, it was gone are the days of waiting an hour and coming back afterwards and then filming stuff again. Yeah. It's gone to those yeah. days. now. <laughs> and, and, and I'll tell you going, going back it, it, with, with that about a craft service is uh, because of COVID, I got to tell you, and I, I don't mean to say this in such a way that COVID is great, but the change in the business was a blessing for craft service because now it used to be where we need to set up over there. We need to set up over there. We need two coolers over there. And, you know, and then, then you don't have enough guys to go do that. So you're running your ass off around now because of COVID you're under a tent and they come to you. Mm. They can't be touching anything, which I think is brilliant the way it should be. Cause we're really making a movie. We're not, you know, right. out there passing out, uh, you know, burritos and, and, uh, and these, you know, uh, parfaits and, sh and crap, you know? So, yeah. 
So on my set, I said, I want to have, I have a friend of mine who I work with uh, the craft service. And I said, just set it up to a, an intent, put, uh, um, you know, uh, tape, caution tape around it and we'll, we'll get it done. And, you know, we didn't have a caterer. We had, we had food came out and this guy took care of, took care of that. So I think that's the way it's going, but um, that saved us because when you break for lunch, you, you leave, it's, if you break at 12, they count, they start counting the time after the last man is there. So if the last man doesn't get there until 20 after 12, now you've got that half hour going. It's not 12 to 1230. It's, it's whatever time the last man went out. And then by, by the time you get on there, there's another half hour. So you've lost an hour and a half of shooting. Uh, before we move the, away from um, 99 problems, I just wanted to ask if there is any, um, if, it, what what's on the horizon? If there's anything you could speak on as far as it, it, any prospects of us being able to see that fleshed out into a full series in the future. That I'm going. I have a couple of meetings this coming week about that. But we did get picked up for a company uh, by a company uh, for the the little uh, piece that I sent you, the proof of concept for Quest of Queens. Okay. So um, that's a company called I Produce, which is I P R O D O O S. I think it's iproduce.com. And the founder for that, his name is uh, Alex uh, Riggs Miller. And um, the CEO is Sherry Jonath. So we are planning on going late, I think late spring, early summer for that. And uh, what at the same time, you know, I'm trying to push, I would love to get uh, the 99 problems through uh, Netflix or get it to Netflix. So we've got a couple of opportunities that we're going to try to present. We'll see what happens. It feels like a show that you could binge on Netflix. It also has the vibe of, of a, a good HBO show, like one of the, uh, you know, the original programming on HBO. It has yeah. that quality to it for sure. I have, I do have to go in for the origin, you know, of it and, and get the, um, you know, get the story involved, but I wanted to start it out where people say, where's this all of a sudden it's kind of like being dropped into a situation and everybody has a relationship, but you don't know what it is and you have to find out. And then you discover what the, the origin of the story is, you know, is and where it's from. So yeah. I, I, yeah, it's a, it's a baby of mine. I, uh, I actually love it. You know, I, I, I want to do that because of my, 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 sorry about that. My whole thing about the twilight zone, you know, and, um, you know, see if I can, have some sort of impact on that. Why don't you subscribe? It'll last longer.